Hey everyone, it's Caitlin from Really Big Plant. Thank you so much for joining me. So I just showed you some clips from the plant shop that I work in from a couple of days ago, and I wanted to include those because for this video, what I'm gonna be doing is rescuing some Hoyas that I took home from the plant shop that were no longer in sellable condition. Um, my boss gave me permission to bring these plants home, and I don't know if they're going to be able to be rehabable. Honestly, they have some funky stuff going on that made me debate even bringing these plants home. One of them was a plant that got returned by a customer, which um, is always a little bit risky to bring home a returned plant because you don't know what the customer exposed that plant to in the time that they had it in their home. Um, and then the other one is a plant that I've been personally trying to rehab in the store and it just has been getting worse and worse and a customer actually asked if the plant was going to infect other plants in the shop and I realized at that moment that I needed to just either toss it or try to bring it home to rehab it. So here we are with two very, very sad Hoyas. Plus I just showed you in that footage, me pulling some, some plant material out of the compost bin at the shop after I was dumping garbage in there. Um, and I noticed that there were some Hoya cuttings in the compost. So I don't know if there's something wrong with these, but they looked okay to me when I inspected them in the store, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to take care of these too. And then the other thing that I wanted to do is I just want to show you this huge, huge, huge fern that I just got. So, <laughs> let me see. <laughs> Um, this is actually a new job for me. I switched stores and I work in a different plant shop now and This fern has been in the store that I work in um, Apparently it had been there for a long time since before I started working there and it's massive and beautiful and wasn't that expensive and it lives up in the like totally inaccessible out of reach areas in the store like you have to climb up on a ladder or like climb up on the shelves to get this plant down and ever since I've started working there I've kind of taken it upon myself to care for this plant because since it is a huge fern it does get very very thirsty pretty frequently so I am always climbing up and down in this store to water this plant and just admiring it. And the other day I finally decided that I was just gonna bring it home. I realized that I would feel sad if someone else bought it. But what I didn't realize is quite how big it is. The width of this plant or like the footprint of this plant is like almost the same size as my green chair. It takes up my entire dining table behind me. And when I was in the store, it didn't seem this big. I mean, like I knew it was huge, but my apartment's really small and when you bring in a big plant, uh, sometimes you don't realize quite how large it is. So I'm trying to figure out where I'm gonna keep this. I'm literally toying with the idea of letting this live on my bed during the day as if it's a decorative pillow and then move it somewhere else at night. <laughs> I wish I was kidding. This is a little bit ridiculous, but for now I'm completely in love with it. I love this fern. This is, it's just so amazing. I've never had a sword fern before. Um, so I think this is a Kimberly Queen fern. It's in an eight inch pot and it's got tons of new growth. And yeah, I can't believe that this plant is mine. So welcome to the fam, another really big plant. Okay, so now we can get into these Hoyas. I have this roll of brown paper, um, just like craft paper, and I'm gonna make myself a little potting 
area so that I can try to contain some of this potentially uh, contagious mess. <laughs> Somebody bought this like a month and a half ago um, from the shop that I work in and they bought it along with a couple of other plants and they returned the entire order. Um, I don't know the details of their return, if they felt like there was something wrong um, or what happened. So anyway, they, they were able to return these plants and this Hoya Carnosa Compacta looks like it had a hard time in their care. It looks like it's both super overwatered and burnt, which <laughs> I'm laughing because this makes so much sense to me. You know, like after you overwater a plant, you might stick it in the brightest sun. And I think that's how you end up with a plant like this that has um, a lot of rotting yellow leaves on the inside. And then these like really burnt leaves on the surface because just putting it in a super hot sun isn't necessarily going to help the soil evaporate water. When you do put that plant in really bright sun, you run the risk of burning the foliage before the heat and the sun is able to actually evaporate the water from the plant. So then you've got a plant that is suffering from both rot and burn simultaneously, which is a bad situation all around. So we're gonna see what we can do from this plant. I'm hoping that it's not too rotted to save because I do think that it should be salvageable. So let's take these hooks off. See what we're working with. This plant has both rotten, soggy leaves and crispy, crinkly leaves. So a lot of times when customers come in who don't really care to learn too much about plants, but they have some plant questions because they want to troubleshoot because something went wrong. And they will be like, my plant died, it turned yellow, and I don't know what happened to it. And so when they can't specify any further than that, I always ask them, was it a crispy death or was it a soggy death? And depending on what they say, you can kind of figure out whether it was overwatering or underwatering. So when you get these squishy, soggy, really gross, um, like slimy leaves, that's overwatering for sure. And then when you get leaves that crisp up to nothing and like disappear, that's usually underwatering. Um, the trickiness comes in when you have overwatering that gets so bad that all of the roots die that that then turns into underwatering because the plant can't drink any more water and it starts to get crispy once all of the roots have rotted away, which is why underwatering and overwatering do ultimately both look kind of the same. Um, but early on, if you can catch it and you notice that you're having soggy death rather than crispy death, it probably means that you could ease up on the watering a little bit. Um, anyway, let's keep pulling this gross stuff out of here. See, all of these leaves that are yellow like this are seeming like they're probably going to rot. Oh, hi. What are you doing back there? That's my dog, Phineas. He's just lurking. He really likes this corner over here and I rearrange the plants in this area all the time and when I block it off a lot He is kind of frustrated. And I think he likes to make a point of like shoving his way in when it's really crowded over here <laughs> Anyway, um, I don't know if this needs to be repotted. I mean it feels really heavy I'm gonna drop it so you can see how heavy this pot is like it's <laughs> There's a lot of water in here. So I'm gonna just take it out of this pot and see what we're working with 
So I like to squeeze the pot and then I'm just gonna try to dump the whole thing out upside down. It really helps if you have someone who can help you with this and hold their hands out to catch the plant when it's upside down, but I'm working alone right now, so we're gonna see what we can do. I'd be able to hold it from the bottom in one hand. Let's see. <laughs> okay, this is awesome. Um, these roots look good to me. I don't really think that I need to do anything to this plant. These are live, healthy roots. So I was going to repot this, but I think I'm gonna just keep it in its original pot because I think it's actually looking pretty good to me. I was worried that it was gonna be all slimy and these roots would be brown, but they're white and spongy and this soil ball doesn't feel quite as um, saturated as I thought. Now, what I might do is I might actually leave this out of the pot for like a day so that it can completely just dry out a little bit. Um, and then stick it back into the plastic pot. So I'm gonna not disturb this soil ball because I actually want it to stay intact. And I maybe I'm just going to leave it. It's like a kokodama with no moss. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave that plant there. It actually really looks okay to me. Now that I pulled all the dead stuff out, um, it's doing okay so that's honestly a total steal and it's definitely still going through a little bit of die off right now but i'm really excited about this um <laughs> this is really cool that i just got to keep this plant okay so let's <laughs> let's take a look at this hoya kentiana at first glance it looks like it might be doing okay but it is really bad I don't know if this plant is actually going to be salvageable at all. It got kind of weird speckly mold that looks like something kind of contagious and I really wasn't sure if I should bring this plant home. Basically, we're gonna just see if there's any of this plant that I feel like is salvageable. off because it looks gross to me. It feels healthy, but something's wrong with it. Like, do you see how it's the wrong color and it's got this brown stuff on it? I don't know what that is. I don't think it's like honeydew from a pest, but it could definitely be some kind of fungal thing. Um, so I'm basically just triaging in an extreme way and I'm going to get rid of any leaf on this plant that looks even a little bit sick to me which unfortunately is almost the entire plant so I'm just gonna keep ripping this apart I guess. Just to be super clear whatever happened to this plant I don't think it's the fault of the plant shop that I work at um, if we're you know having to play the blame game. We were caring for it like normal I don't think anyone like overwatered it or anything like that. I haven't seen it spread to any of the other plants, so that was part of my decision-making process in whether or not I should bring this plant home because we did keep these with a bunch of other Hoyas in the shop and I've been keeping my eye on those Hoyas and none of them are developing any kind of issue that looks even anything close to this. Those Hoyas are all perfectly healthy, so I'm hoping that if there is something wrong with this, it's just really plant specific. And I don't know, I was looking online and I did see some people saying on Reddit, of course, that their Hoya Kentiana is a little bit like finicky sometimes and can turn kind of brown and mushy. So I don't know if that means that this plant is more susceptible to overwatering or what it is, but 
we're gonna we're gonna see what we can do I'm hoping that I'll be able to recover just at least like a little bit of this plant because I really do want one of these. I might give it like one round of weirdness before I give up on it entirely. So I'm gonna take all the leaves off and then if it gets weird again, I'll pull those leaves off. And then if it gets weird again, I'm gonna throw it out. So <laughs> we will see. I'm taking this plant apart and we're gonna take a look at all of the root areas. soon because I don't know if this plant is going to disintegrate like it looks really healthy right now but that was exactly what the problem was with this plant was that it went from looking really healthy to being very problematic in just a couple of days in the store and I'm not sure why so we'll see what happens with this um, yeah I've got it in this little terracotta pot now and I'm just gonna keep my fingers crossed and keep my eyes on this plant and really really hope that this becomes a new member of my Hoya collection and then I separated out these pieces because they've reverted. This one has like one little variegated leaf up at the top up here and then the rest of them are dark green and this is also a little dark green section so I figured I could just pot these separately together and that would be cute. Okay that reminds me, this was the plant that I pulled out of the compost so it looks like it's a little Hoya um, Carnosa Crimson Princess that also started to revert um into just the plain green form so i've got these two little pieces here these are the ones that i pulled out of the compost and for obvious reasons they're like maybe kind of gross because they came out of the compost in the store so i checked them thoroughly before i brought them home for pests and i don't see any pests on them so my guess is whoever trimmed this off probably just like ripped this part of the plant out possibly because it reverted um, and because it looks like these leaves have a little bit of like, you know, damage on them. The shop that I work in now is very particular about making sure that the plants always look really great and that they're pruned really nicely. I think this might have just been a little bit too damage looking plus the reversion merited getting rid of this plant. So, uh, yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these since I've already contaminated them because I'm just touching everything with the same hands, I'm gonna just take all of these like slightly reverted plants and pot them together into this pot and make a little rescue Hoya salad.
Okay, so now I've got this funny little mixed green salad in here <laughs> of a couple different Hoyas. So I don't know if any of these are gonna grow. We're gonna, we're gonna see what happens to this. All right, you guys, that is it for this Hoya rescue video. I'm hoping that this rescue was successful. <laughs> Um, but I guess we're not gonna find out for a little while. I feel like it's so rewarding to rescue a plant and then like months later, years later down the line to have a plant that you know that you rescued from nothing is part of the joy of caring for plants in my opinion. Um, the fact that you can nurture the tiniest little clipping of life and turn it into a really big plant is just one of the coolest things. I'm just gonna keep my fingers crossed and hope that these plants rehab okay. Yeah, I would love to hear from you on what plants you have rehabbed recently. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. I hope you're having a fantastic. I hope you're having a fantastic week. Thank you so so much for watching, and I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye. My husband just got home, and my dog's barking. <laughs> Bye, guys.